this is Rich Lavens of Eurotherm by Watlow, and I had a question today on how to set up communications between a 6180 XIO recorder and one of the Eurotherm uh, temperature controllers. Uh, we're going to do this through a feature called Master Communications. Um, the 6100 XIO series uh, comes standard with Master Communications, but you could do the same thing with a normal recorder and then just enable Master Communications. So um, I'm mimicking uh, an actual recorder on my PC through uh, the Bridge Full software. So I guess we can get into it. So. Up in the upper left-hand corner, and this, again, this is exactly what my recorder looks like. We are going to click on this logged out button. And we're going to log in as engineer. And then your recorder will likely have a unique password. And we're going to put that in and hit enter. And you can see in the upper left, I'm now in the engineer mode. These five little uh, squares down in the lower right, if we click there and then click the root menu here, we're going to go to operator. Basically, it's like entering the configuration um, in the recorder. So normally, you probably would not be using the bridge software and doing this on your PC. Since the 6100 series are touchscreen recorders, this is just going to be exactly like touching the screen of the recorder. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come into this config button, click there, and we need to go to master comms to set up our master communication. So we're going to click there. And we'll let that open. If you look in the upper right of your recorder, uh, there's a little progress bar. So I've got this set up already. So um, I've got a slave device called the EPC 3000. It is enabled. It is online. The descriptor, if you don't want to call it EPC 3000, you can give the descriptor whatever name you want, you know, zone one, whatever. We're connecting over Ethernet. Now, here, this is the instrument's IP address. So the first three fields, 192.168.111, that has to be the same between the recorder and whatever uh, instruments you're trying to talk to. The last field, the 222 in my case, those have to be different between each instrument and the recorder. So I've put this in here. Um, I can hit detect this slave and it will go out and find it. I've already done that. Um, that's really it uh, as far as the master comm setup. So we'll start up here though. I'll show you another one. I don't have a second one connected, but if I wanted to connect a second device, I would hit remote two. I would hit enable. And again, the descriptor could be, um, you know, zone two. Again, I would give it its own IP address. Now I'm not going to hit detect because I don't have it hooked up, but really that that is the setup. So um, once you're done with this, you would normally come down here and hit apply. I'm not going to do that because uh, I know there's nothing else out there. So in this case, I'm going to just discard what I just did. And you can see the, um, the changes I made were in red. And when you hit apply, they will go black, basically signifying that it's done. So that is the uh, master comm setup. So I'm going to go back up to the one I do have connected. Um, under the profile, if I click that, you can see there are a bunch of different Eurotherm uh, instruments already populated there. If you're using uh, somebody else's controller that has uh, Ethernet, or if you don't see what you need, you can just pick this third-party profile. So that is the setup for the master comms. Now we're going to come back, hit config again, and this time we're going to set up a channel. So on the standard recorders, a channel could be a, a, a thermocouple or a 4 to 20 or whatever. The XIO has no hardwired sensor inputs. Everything is done over communications. Um, but whether it's on a normal recorder or an XIO, 
we are going to have to set up a channel. So we'll let this load up here. So in this case, I've got channel one right here. And again, I can select all the different channels, but we're gonna stick with channel one since it's working. The input type, again, on a normal recorder, if I click that, it's going to say thermocouples. You'll have some different options, but the XIO only is uh, available on Mastercom. So we're going to leave that as is. <clears throat> the, um, the slave is, is what we set up. Again, if I had eight different ones, I would have eight slave devices. But in my case, I just have the one. Uh, if you had more than that, the drop down would show you what device you want to set up. Um, so the function code, there's a read input register four, and there's a read hold. In, in our case, I just want to read the input. So we're going to put read input register four. And then the register, this is the address you want to look at in the in the instrument. So in my case, I've got an EPC 3004 set up. So let's look at that real quick on iTools. <clears throat> so here's our instrument. And give that a second to pull up and I'll show you where I'm getting those register addresses from. So here we are. If I go into my parameter explorer and I want to look at my process value, I can come to my analog input number one. And right here is my process value that resides at address 289. So if I go back to my recorder, that's where the 289 is coming in. So depending on what register I want to read, I put in that register address. So 289. Um, again, the integer is usually 16 bit. You can have decimal places or not, depending on uh, you know, your preference. Your span low and span high, that's kind of setting up the scale for the recorder. So in this case, my low end is zero degrees, my high end is a thousand, and that represents zero to hundred percent of span, basically. Again, I can do a decimal point here. I can pick a color for the trend on the chart. So if I hit that, I've got a variety of colors I can pick from. And I've already picked red, so I'm just gonna leave that. Oop, I messed that up. So now we're gonna go back here and do that. So there we go. And again, once I pick a color, uh, zero, if I want to change that, I have to hit the apply button down here. So we're going to cancel that. Uh, the units, again, uh, Fahrenheit, Celsius. But again, if I had uh, pressure or, uh, you know, vacuum, I can change the units right here. My descriptor is the process value. If you don't want it to read PV, you want to give it its own designation. So again... Zone number one, we can do that. So I'll hit apply on that. And you can see up in the uh, upper right, it's applied that or in the process of doing that. Uh, to set up another channel. So again, we're going to come up here. So my channel number. Here is a set point. So we'll click on set point. I've already got that set up. Basically everything's the same, but notice the register address, 24. So my set point on this particular controller would have resided in the loop block, set point tab, set point number one. Is it address 24? It's reading 82 degrees. If I go back to my recorder, there's register address 24, it actually does show you the value on the second line up here, 82 degrees. Um, and I think I've got some other channels set up, but that is basically in a nutshell, how you would go about setting up multiple instruments using the master comms area, and then setting up channels 
using the, uh, the configuration channel. At the end of the day, when I'm all done, I can come up here and hit engineer and log out. Um, that is, uh, that's a quick tutorial on how to set this up. I hope you find it helpful, but please give us a call or drop us an email. Thank you so much. Bye.